Hi folks, uh, so today uh, we have another non-picking video uh, because I recently had to order uh, this piece of equipment for a, uh, for a customer who had a fairly unusual uh, uh, need. Um, so what this is, is the Yale uh, Model 81 uh, Roller Bolt Deadlock. And uh, exactly what that uh, what that means, uh, we'll see in a second. So let's just uh, start by unboxing this thing, and we'll sort of go through it uh, as we do all that. So we open the box, pull out this little sheet of cardboard. Uh, first, we have the cylinder that's included with it, uh, which seems to be fairly standard for Yale's current uh, rim locks. Uh, the cylinder body uh, looks like it's cast from probably uh, Zamac, uh, but the actual plug seems to be uh, milled brass, which is not not the worst in the world. Uh, stamped brass coloring. Bag with a bunch of... Uh, Got a mix of wood screws, fairly short ones, and uh, some different size machine screws. And uh, that little white plastic piece is to align the tailpiece of the cylinder uh, with the uh, actual bolt as you assemble it. We've got this other cardboard divider here. We've got the instruction sheet, which we'll put aside. And we have, in this bag here, we have the strike box. Uh, and this is a, an actual box, uh, because we have first this plate here, which would be mounted on the door frame, put a couple of wood screws, or metal screws, depending on what you're mounting it on, through there. And then this slides over it, and is secured to it with a couple of machine screws here, and then a couple more wood or metal screws uh, to secure that to the frame. So uh, as far as strike designs go, this is pretty uh, pretty solid stuff. You can see uh, it's none of this is really, none of the uh, surfaces that actually will be bearing the weight of the bolt uh, when it's, if someone is trying to push in the door uh, those are all pretty solid uh, parts there, which is uh, good as a strike design. And then we finally get to the bolt itself. So we'll just get that box out of the way, and let's get this thing out of the bag, because this is really what makes this interesting. Uh, so from the outside, you know, all of this is pretty much standard for uh, Yale's modernized uh, rim lock uh, deadbolts. Uh, this is basically the the modern version of their night latch. They still do the classic night latch design, but this is the modernized version. Uh, so first thing is this plate here that sort of slides around right now is uh, the mounting plate. It combines as you can see right here, it combines the retainer plate for the cylinder. That's where the tailpiece goes, and then these two holes here, or if you're mounting it the other way, these two holes here uh, are where the retaining screws go. And then these two tabs with the screw holes uh, are secured, are used to secure the bolt to the door uh, by couple of machine screws inserted there. So we'll put that aside. And here's really where things get interesting, because this is obviously not a standard deadbolt. It has this little uh, brass roller right here, which is why it's called a roller bolt. And if we, uh, and we notice that it's kind of always seems to be extended here. This is the unlocked position for the uh, lever. And 
right here, it is very springy. So I can just push it in with my thumb there. But if I turn that lever to the lock position, now this is fully extended. This has a, about a three quarter inch throw. And that is deadlocked. So how does all of that work and what is this for? Well, we'll start by opening this guy up. I get uh, Phillips head here. And remove one screw there. And one screw there. And by the way, this uh, little circular piece right here uh, is just where the uh, tail of the rim cylinder uh, engages with the lock to lock and unlock the bolt. And now with those two screws removed, we can just lift this plate off. It sort of hooks into the body a little bit. Uh, with this tab on the front. So if we put that aside, now we get into the actual inner workings of this. So let's try this again with the cover off. You have to be kind of careful because there's a bunch of springs in here. But basically you can see here that as I move the lever, it lifts this post up, which starts to turn this plate that plate slides forward and that uh, post right there and those two pieces push the bolt all the way forward and uh, locks them in place and then similarly if I flip the lever back the other way if it doesn't drop out of its track like that it withdraws that so this is just a very simple plate with a long curved flat spring uh, to keep that leveled. And then there's the bolt itself here. So here we can see with the lever in the locked position, that post drives up against this surface on the bolt. And this would normally draw the bolt back. Now let's see if we can actually remove the bolt safely because there is this spring right here which helps push the bolt out. So we have to be very careful about that when we disassemble this because otherwise it will just go flying across the room and we don't want that. Okay, there we go. So, I've got the bolt out. Managed to smack my thumb with the spring there. And you can see this groove on the bolt itself, or on the main part of the bolt, uh, is where that spring uh, rides. And that keeps it aligned and keeps that bolt biased outward. And then inside, all we're left with is the uh, is the uh, lever. On the inside it's this cam with a post on it and uh, this spring and pretty much everything else in there is, are just these little cast-in tabs uh, which are designed to keep all the different parts aligned and spaced correctly. And then there's this uh, wire spring, probably steel. Uh, so that general type of construction is actually pretty similar to the classic uh, the classic night latch uh, bodies, 
They just happened to be made of um, cast iron originally. Uh, so <clears throat> basically the idea of this is that that springiness allows this to act as both a latch and as a deadbolt in one lock, uh, which makes it very useful if for some reason uh, you can only fit a, uh, a rim lock and you need a deadbolt, but you also, uh, but the thing is that normally uh, you have to have a latch on a door uh, because the, the, the latch is usually considered the primary lock on a door and the deadbolt is the secondary lock. The latch is what keeps it closed. Most latches are really only going to have enough uh, strength to keep a door secure against a heavy wind or uh, sort of a light push. It's not going to stop a kick-in or any sort of determined, forceful uh, attempt to uh, force the door open. The deadbolt has that extra strength, that extra resistance to withstand that forceful attack. Uh, but the broad, flat face of the deadbolt uh, if it doesn't have, if it's pushed up against the strike, has a lot of friction, a lot of friction, and it can very easily cause a deadbolt to jam or be difficult to uh, withdraw if you only have a deadbolt filled, fitted. So this design uh, is sort of a, an interesting compromise. This roller, together with this. Uh, rounded surface here allows this bolt to be a deadbolt, a perfectly good deadbolt, but uh, it can also act like a spring latch when it's in the unlocked position, uh, which is kind of an interesting thing and happens to be a rather unusual circumstance. Apparently in, uh, in England it is a common enough issue that uh, Yale actually made a, a deadbolt design specifically to address that scenario. Uh, there's no real equivalent for it in the US, which is why I had to go and send uh, away to England for this uh, customer to get, them, uh, to get them set up with this. So I just thought it was uh, an interesting and unusual uh, bit of hardware that uh, uh, people outside of uh, England, or even people in England who aren't familiar with this design uh, might, might find interesting. So thank you very much for watching, and until next time, have fun and happy picking.